in this lecture we are going to see that what will be the fate of a special relativity proposed by Albert Einstein when a speed of light c is infinite. As you know that if the speed of light in free space is considered to be infinite, it would imply that there is no upper limit on the speed at which an information or any physical object can travel. In such a scenario, the principles of spatial relativity which involve the constant speed of light would no longer apply. Actually, spatial relativity developed by Albert Einstein, you know, is based on the postulate that the speed of light in a vacuum is a constant and finite. Its value is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, as you know. Actually, this uh, uh, theory introduces a significant change to our understanding of uh, space and time, such as time dilation, length contraction, mass variation, and uh, s uh, many more, when objects approach to a speed close to the speed of light. All these things you have learned uh, in your course on uh, spatial relativity. On the other hand, uh, this Newtonian mechanics, or you can say the classical mechanics, is actually a branch of uh, classical physics that works well for objects moving at speeds much slower than the speed of light. In fact, at higher speed, that is at the speed uh, which approaches to the speed of light in free space, Newtonian mechanics badly fails but at a smaller speed it works well okay in fact uh, uh, it is based uh, on newton's uh, laws of motion which assume that time and space are absolute in newtonian mechanics you consider that time and space are absolute not relative and so they are not uh, the subject of relativistic effects okay but if the speed of light were infinite, it would mean that objects could move from one point to another instantaneously. No time will be taken by a, an object to move from one point to another. In fact, in such a scenario, the principle of spatial relativity, which are crucial for understanding the relativistic effects at high speeds, would become irrelevant. How it will become irrelevant, you can see uh, uh, by the idea of classical limit. You know that actually the relativistic mechanics is transformed into the equivalent classical result when we impose the condition of classical limit on any relativistic formula. And what is that classical limit? You know that if you consider that v is the speed of an object and c is a speed of light or electromagnetic wave in free space, then when v is much smaller than c, or in other words, you can say that v over c is much less than 1, or uh, you can also say that this v over c tends towards 0. That is a number which will be actually much smaller than 1 that will be closer to 0. In fact, in this condition, uh, you will see that uh, all the relativistic results are transformed into its classical equivalent. And so this condition that V over C tending towards 0 is called classical limit. Actually, in this limiting condition, Newtonian mechanics is valid and there is no need of relativistic mechanics. Okay. Now, if you consider that the speed of light is infinite or the c tends to infinity, then you can see for any value of v, not v is very small, but v may be very large. Even then, when c is infinite, v over c will tend to zero. And in fact, in this condition, always the situation will be of classical limit. Okay, If c is infinite, then 
always v by c is tending toward zero and that it means uh, always we are in a situation when this condition of classical limit holds so in this condition for any motion of any object newtonian mechanics will hold and there will be no need of relativistic mechanics so uh, you can say that uh, there will uh, there is no need of einstein's special relativity if a speed of light is infinite but since it is finite uh, in that condition uh, a special relativity is needed at higher speed now uh, i am just giving you some of the consequences of uh, a special relativity and you can see how that result will transform into its classical newtonian equivalent uh, when c is infinite for example if you consider one of the important consequence of length contraction length contraction you know that if an object is in motion then in the direction of motion in accordance with special relativity the length of the object gets contracted let us consider that this is uh, an object lying along x axis and its length we consider along x axis is l not when it is at rest that is v is equal to 0 it or in other words you can say that its speed is 0 with respect to an observer uh, any observer okay but when this object moves with a speed v let us say the speed of the object is v in x direction then the observer observes that its length becomes l according to newtonian mechanics this l and this l not are same but according to relativistic mechanics you know this l is equal to l not times 1 minus v square over c square okay but if you consider that this c is equal to infinity then what will happen you know then l will be simply equal to l naught times 1 minus v square by infinity and this will be l naught root over 1 minus 0 and so l will be simply equal to l naught and this is actually the newtonian result or classical result so what you are seeing here that if we consider that a speed of uh, light is infinity then this relativistic result becomes the classical result okay similarly if you consider the case of time dilation time dilation you know that in accordance with time dilation formula of a special relativity this uh, time interval delta t is equal to delta t naught over 1 minus v square by c square actually here this uh, you know that this t delta t naught is the proper time interval and this delta t is the observed time or dilated time but here again you can see that if c is equal to infinity you can check that this delta t will be simply equal to delta t naught that is there is no time dilation okay in uh, every frame the time interval of an event when measured will be same okay and similarly you can see the case of relativistic mass variation this mass variation formula you know is what you have studied in your course on special relativity uh, that m equal to m naught over root over 1 minus b square by c square okay so if again you can see this c is infinity m will be equal to m naught it means there is no relativistic mass variation so you can say that newtonian mechanics does not fail 
will not fail if it is seen that c is equal to infinity but uh, unfortunately c is not infinity it is finite so einstein felt uh, to ch uh, change the concept of space and time and proposed special relativity but by chance let us consider there is an there is a, a world where c is infinity actually in that world there is no need of a special relativity already that world will work well satisfactory well uh, in newtonian mechanics uh, in accordance with newtonian mechanics okay so i hope you have understand that when c will be infinity there uh, there will be no need of relativistic mechanics our newtonian mechanics will work well in that world okay thank you very much